which focused on our uh, problem of practice. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, state that goal again to kind of refresh our memories. And um, after that, we are going to focus on our STAR portfolios to see how they are working into this plan and see if it's doing everything we intended. And we're going to give some feedback and look at what we need to change to improve it and also highlight the positive things. But let's look at the goal we wrote. We put, increase the percent of students authentically engaged through motivating activities by 20% by the end of the 2012-2013 school year. So right now we're about halfway through, so uh, we want our targets so that we've at least made a significant amount of improvement mm -hmm. through all the things that we wrote. Mm -hmm. And these STAR portfolios, um, we've all done our data, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. we, yes have we have Awesome. Done, yes. uh, first off, the first thing I want to say is, I really like the, the changes that we made this year compared to the last year. From what I've seen, uh, the, the students uh, were very uh, compliant and were interested in the activity of uh, marking which teaks they did well on, which ones mm -hmm. they didn't. Uh, I think the, from my perspective, the, the concern I'm still having is the students who are uh, weakest, they, it's not make, they're not catching the, the importance and it's not motivating them to do better. It's a, like in a way, mm -hmm. it's making them aware that they're not doing well in a specific teak or several teaks, mm -hmm. and not sure what's going on inside their mind as far as, you know, will it increase their uh, desire to do better, or is it, you know, reinforcing what they already know? My, my question is, is when you had, one of the other outcomes that, you're, that you wrote was to really work with growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Did you see any change in the growth mindset with those students when you had taught them uh, the good. difference between um, growth mindset versus, uh, what's the terminology? That fixed. We fixed. Fixed mindset. Um, did, uh, so did you see any changes? Yeah, for a, good, a large portion of the class, I did see a major uh, difference or shift in understanding about not getting frustrated. I may not have mastered it yet. We've learned that term. Uh, but for some students, it's, they're still stuck in a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. I've seen whenever I did mine um, those past few weeks, the students who are truly engaged in the class, they do not show growth on paper. But you know, they've shown growth, you know, like on homework or class activities. So like for them, I feel like they have. Um, they're not at that fixed stage of where, you know, oh, I, I can't do this yet. You know, they're getting there and they're trying, but on paper, whenever we have these and they're looking at their teaks, um, there's no growth. And so I'm thinking, what what's going on? Why, why, is, why isn't there growth in those? So, anything specific that you notice? Yeah, I agree with uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Sykes because uh, when I did it, like, it's, it's kind of an eye-opener for them. Like, you know, yes, I'm not there yet, but I have to work towards that goal. So sometimes it was kind of a frustration for them, but they kind of changed the attitude towards like, you know, okay, I, I haven't mastered this, so this is my goal for the next one month. You know, we have four weeks for the start. Mm -hmm. So it kind of opened their mind. Like, you know, okay, I really have to work on this and if I need to be here for tutorials and get that necessary help, you need to do it. So from my perspective, uh, yes, some kids have a very fixed mindset, like say, okay, it doesn't matter for them, like whether they master it or not, not, but majority of the kids, they did. Like it just got through to them. So this has really worked, kind of mind. Alana, you were saying that you liked how y'all did it this year versus last year. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Well, <clears throat> whenever I was sitting down to make these and get ready mm -hmm. for it, I had my my uh, form that I used in years past, right. but and I was like, well, I could use this, and then I remembered, well, how we did it at Christmas when we did it on the tee, mm -hmm. and I never thought about how different they were, but now it's like, okay, so whenever we're making our plans for remediation, I can say, okay, specifically, this student needs to work on 8.2B, and I, I can look directly at it. Mm -hmm. So not only does it help me mm -hmm. understand exactly what to do, the student said, okay, I need to compare and order rational numbers with integers, percents, positive and negative fractions, things like that. 
as opposed to before, it was like, oh, you're weak on objective one, like um, functional it's relationships. Like, yes. These are off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. that's such a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, so you get a lot of the nods. Mm -hmm. So now it's specific. So when I'm pulling lessons, mm -hmm. like for that kid, or when they come to tutorials, mm -hmm. which is for me a hard thing as a teacher in a math class, you get so many different things, I can immediately say, okay, go pull your star chart, let's pick an objective to work on. Mm -hmm. So it makes my life a lot simpler. I can look at what exactly to pull. Mm -hmm. And while at first, when I first did it at Christmas, I just had them highlight the areas they mastered and then what they didn't. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I realized, like, okay, they're not, they're just highlighting a box. So this time around, I said, read through it, pick out all the important words in the teak. So I knew that this child was reading it, mm -hmm. picking out a meaning. Mm -hmm. And I know another teacher uh, in a different subject, they even said they had them write the teak, mm -hmm. which I think it was in history, and I think they're doing a little bit better so they didn't have as much to write. Mm -hmm. But in math, they would have had to you know, write a pipe. Okay. So I wanted yes. to go through and highlight and pick out. And I think we've actually done that activity before with our curriculum where we picked out the verbs mm -hmm. yes, in the teak. So mm -hmm. I went with that. So since you had them rewrite the teaks, did you see the ownership and the engagement in class go up from writing the teak versus just having them highlight? Well, Do you think that that was the Yes, difference? but I haven't seen it yet in class, but I've seen it in our advisory. In the advisory class. Because in advisory now, uh, we are doing instruction based on the student's specific need. So now they know I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. Mm -hmm. They saw it. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I'm like, okay, you're in a group with other students who struggled on this specific area, and I haven't got the resistance. like. They're like, it wasn't what I expected it to be. I expected, but now it, it actually surprisingly wasn't. We mm -hmm. sat in groups. They were with kids who all kind of had, they struggled on it. Mm -hmm. But even within that group of strugglers, you had some different levels of, of ability. Oh, yeah. So they were able yeah. to give mm -hmm. the feedback mm -hmm. to kind of, so it wasn't like they were all sitting at a paper blank and didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They sometimes just needed to put their minds together. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. But so I think that I've seen ownership in advisory, but I believe that I'm going to start seeing it more in the classroom as we get to some of our review. Now I was walking around and doing some walkthroughs, and I walked mm -hmm. through your class, Keshani, and you had them working in partners. Right. And I would say mm -hmm. that 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 classroom was was authentically engaged. Like mm -hmm. our goal is mm -hmm. the state. So um, how did you? Did, were they working on this activity, or were they yeah, just did actually, you just have them partner? Yes. Since we broke down the quintiles, mm -hmm. and then the, every group knew what objective they were working on that day. So, mm -hmm. so what I did was I, I grouped them, they had the stations, and then the high achievers, which are the algebra kids, PAP kids, and the quintile five kids, mm -hmm. walk around helping them in mm -hmm. stations. So that okay. kind of, the high achievers loved it, like, you know, because they, they got the concept, so they were helping their fellow students going around and helping them. So I have a I question that about that. Things. How was the, um, like the students who tutored, what was their peers' reaction? Were they open to it? They loved it because, you know, sometimes the kids talk their own language. So uh -huh. more than a teacher explaining to them, like the kid can explain it to another friend in their own language. I found that my, the higher achieving kids yes. in my classes, uh -huh. they were not um, they weren't all in the quintile fives. They were like in the quintiles two and three. And so those, those kids were the ones who needed help. And so the lower achieving students in class were the ones who did better, who were in the higher quintiles okay. and were able to help the other students. So it was like the roles were reversed. Uh, and it really let the, um, those students uh -huh. shine in the class, which okay. was really good because the other kids were like, oh, I kind of do need help. Well, from here, what do we feel like we can do to improve? Well, after listening to our, our conversation, I, my problem at first was about those students who, were, who weren't authentically engaged at that last, uh, lowest quartile. I think after listening to our conversation, I, I can in, use to, uh, peer tutoring to help those students and also maybe there's a way we can look at uh, our forms. Maybe there's a better way to improve the forms and the way the students use them so that it'll make it more meaningful for, for them as well. I know we, you know, each year, you know, we, I feel like we've been improving the form. Mm -hmm. So every time we walk away with something that we want to change and do differently mm -hmm. next year, uh, 
Ms. Pathridge, is there anything specifically that you feel like we can do? Because since you're new to our school, you, mm -hmm. you kind of have a fresh set of eyes. Right, right. Now, like, if we can combine these two forms so that mm -hmm. the, the kids see the actual teak on the form. Like at the same time? Same time, okay. yes. So that would kind of would be an eye-opener rather than we have the teak written by the abbreviation, but it's not, it's in detail. Right, so if we can combine these two. Uh, I think that's yes. a great idea. Yes. So like basically, we're just gonna combine these two forms. You talked about earlier how you had your kids highlight the verbs. We can have our kids, so if the paper is uh, maybe in like a landscape, and we'll have the actual teak and the teak number, and then we'll have um, the questions and the numbers that they got correct. Maybe on the left-hand column, the right-hand column, the students can write in their own words what the teak is. Mm -hmm. Do you know, is that, that a yes. And then we also have a class discussion, yeah. you know, with, within the class of what they thought that this teak meant mm -hmm. and see and compare it to words. everyone else right. in their own words mm -hmm. and they understand what it is. Also, like sharing with your other team members about utilizing this and embracing it and getting like everybody else mm -hmm. on your team. You mean your interdisciplinary team? Yes. Like yes. history. Like other subjects. And, and getting yeah. support. Yeah. Like yeah. sharing with them like the successes that we had from it mm -hmm. and admitting to them like the struggles we had too because mm -hmm. If they're not seeing the point in it, you know, showing them what we found as the point, mm -hmm. and admitting the areas that we want to improve, and, and I think that we can get a better buy-in, and if it's a cross-campus type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it.